and you can see the weld. I didn't quite get it perfectly welded and blended right there. Hi, Dan Tokar here at the Willow Forge in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. And today uh, we're going to look on the Blacksmith's Dictionary at little forge welds. Um, I'm going to show you how to forge weld a sheet metal hoop, starting with a piece of 18 gauge uh, sheet metal that was uh, sheared out and ending up with this little hoop that's forge welded. Uh, it's kind of hard to keep uh, a small sheet metal uh, aligned like this because if you're going to make a band, so I'm going to show you one of the uh, what I think of as indexing scarves or uh, positioning scarves for thin things. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put a tiny little bit of uh, paper on the uh, the end. You don't want to have the full thickness on the end. A little bit of paper helps blend everything in. So I think probably about a half an inch on the end of this thing. doesn't need to be very hot. So I've just put a little bit of a taper on the very end. I'm going to cool this off now in the, in the water. I'm going to do the other end, because that's where the other end of the scarf is going to be. Just the last half an inch or so gets to be tapered. Okay. Now this one, I have options. Something this thin, I can uh, just let it cool down and then cut it with a pair of tin snips, or I can take a chisel and cut it, or I could even use a hot cut and cut it. I'm going to see if I can just cut this with a pair of thin snips. So all I'm going to do is cut this into three more or less equal pieces. Or I should say, slots. Again, you can see it's just about as long as the place that I tapered. And I'm going to bend the center one down and these two wings on the outside in.
like that. Into the vase and just bend this band around it. Why don't I do it the easy way with a pair of vice grips? I can just take the uh, But you say my band is is overlaps too much. Well, gee, we have we have science on our side. This is science's solution. You pull on it until they they match up. Then you put the slotted part two below, one in the center above, and you set it just by closing it up Now I'm going to heat this up and flux it and weld it. Just a little bit of borax in the cup here. It won't take a lot of borax. Looks like a lot of borax just because it's fluffed up as the moisture comes out of it. Now, I'm going to have to put the filter on the camera, otherwise all you'll see is a glare. But for a little while, until we get there, it's going to look kind of dark. Just because anytime I forge weld, it's safer. T-shirts do not protect you from forge welding flux. 
And I wear glasses, but you should wear something. Goggles, safety glasses, something. You don't want to get flux, particularly red hot flux in your eyes. I've had enough little craters in my glasses for tiny little bits of red hot flux hitting them to know that you don't, don't want to have that hit your eyes. Now, this sheet metal is so thin, the biggest danger is burning it up. Um, it'll come up to a forge welding heat very quickly. But you have to sort of like get it hot and then uh, let the heat spread without burning it up. So you get the whole fire kind of up to a forge welding temperature and then you'll back off and crank slowly or reduce the, uh, the heat a little bit. I'm paying attention. There is a kind of a sodium flare. You get a, a sort of a yellower color comes to the fire when the borax begins to get hot enough to uh, boil off in the fire. I poke a little, little tiny hole so I can see what's going on. The other thing is, with stuff this thin, you only get two or three hits before it's no longer at a welding heat. I'm going to do an insurance build, but I need some more borax. As long as you haven't burned it up, you'd be surprised how many times you can weld a tiny little piece like this. Nothing that says everything has to be perfectly welded in the first weld. It really is hard to get thin, thin parts to weld evenly because they are cooling off so fast that you're, you can only hammer on a couple of spots before it cools off too much.
that in one more time. And I'll do one last little insurance throw. Okay, and I'm going to let this cool off a little bit and I will uh, true it up on the uh, cone mantle. Okay, so I've let this cool down and then uh, put it in some water. the hoop. You can see the weld. What if I turn on a little more light here? Yes. And you can see the weld. I didn't quite get it perfectly welded and blended right there, but it's the same thickness. And it's pretty much stuck together at least well enough that I could bang on it and make it into a hoop. It's actually quite strong. See, I'm trying to twist it. It's, it's welded. If I was a real fuss budget, I'd go back in the fire and try and weld those, uh, the very ends of the scarfs down, but that that is a very satisfying little forge bulb.
Again, the fuss budget in me. I'll go back and correct. The main thing is, is that you end up with a band that is uh, the same thickness uh, all the way around. You don't end up with any lumps.